Welcome everybody. Here we are going to cover the topic advanced reports. We will be learning how to generate advanced level reports. Reports. Basically, why do any businessman would require a report to display his current business status? could be any kind of business report, any kind of business process report, could be manufacturing or could be related to logistics or could be related to payment, anything. Any financial reports based on transactions till date till the last minute or the last transaction passed. Based on the requirement of these kind of reports, we have classified reports in different types based on their functionality so the types of reports that we have we have categorized are the tabular reports where we have the fixed number of columns then we have hierarchy report that is called nothing but the drill down rep uh, reports then we have columnar reports a report with multiple columns and we have graph reports a report that has a graph so starting with the tabular report, this is how a generally a tabular report looks like. The number of columns are absolutely fixed. Date, particulars, voucher type, voucher type number, debit and credit. So these are the columns that are fixed in a tabular report. Then we have a hierarchy report. That is you press enter and you move down to the next screen. You press enter and you move down to the next screen. This is the drill down report. And then we have the columnar report. Number of columns, we don't know. Depends on the user call. And we have a graph report. A report with a graph at the bottom. Uh, please note in tally, we today we only have bar graphs. So whatever report you have will be as a type of bar graphs. So starting with the very basic thing, uh, designing a tabular report. A tabular report is nothing but a very basic tabular report, a report which has fixed number of fields and this can be interactive based on user report that could be using your display collection, uh, probably auto collection, you, uh, you give a option to select a ledger name and you open the vouchers of that particular ledger. And basically a tabular report will have a report title, the body and the totals at the bottom and obviously every uh, line will be repeat uh, the line that you need will be repeated on a collection making these this report interactive could be through the button or maybe through the explosion now what is an explosion uh, explosion is nothing but expansion of your legs so this is what we have explode trial balance right now that you see is capital account shift enter exploded current account shift enter exploded this is nothing but the explosion current assets explode sundry debtors explode ease debtors explode this is called explosion that is shift enter. Now, uh, coming talking about the explosion of the line. Now, this explosion of the line could be through a button or through the uh, key of shift enter. That's what we have provided in default tally. So, if you look at the display trial balance, here we have alt F1 detailed also, and you can press shift enter to collapse also or you press alt f1 to collapse so it's expand collapse expand collapse in tdl terms this is called explosion and no explosion so the attribute explode of the line definition is used for explosion explode takes the current data from the line and displays in the additional information in the exploded 
Then we have a function called dollar dollar key explode function which checks the current status of the key combination shift enter. So when you press the shift enter once, uh, the key function status turns to 1. When you press it second time, it turns to 0. You press it again the third time, it becomes 1. So it's a 1, 0 combination. The first time you press, it's 1. The next time you press, it's 0. Just to, It's a, like a true false uh, status. It checks for this shift enter key. Very simple to write this. Syntax is explode part name and uh, you may or may not provide a condition. So, uh, exploded part and logical condition. This condition is not mandatory. However, if you require the part to get exploded only after an action is performed, probably a shift enter is pressed or probably when a condition, a given condition is true, is when you can provide. Else, what will happen is the moment you enter the report, the part would be exploded as soon as the report is entered. And this is an example, a very simple example, explode colon part name. Now, why this is a part name is very simple. Where do we repeat uh, lines in a part? Now, uh, we can repeat lines only in a part. There is a possibility that you might require multiple lines and these multiple lines again uh, maybe on a collection a repeated on a collection so from a main line you will have an explode attribute which again refers to a part name in this part you can have a line and this line again can be repeated on another part so let us just take an example that we have in our tdl So this is the main repeat line and repeated on a collection of group and ledgers. This is the main line. Explode to my tree be group explosion. In this part line, repeat on my line. Another collection can be called scroll vertical. This repeat line may further have an explosion. Now we have recalled the same explosion and we have given condition. So it will continue to explode within the loop until and unless it reaches a level where it cannot explode itself further. So you do not have to say stop exploding. I mean, no, you do not have to give a condition to say stop exploding. The moment it turn, uh, it uh, just turns off the uh, number of objects available in the collection, the explosion stops. So there is a recursive explosion given and obviously uh, we need the values. By default the values will come in one line. We want the values to get shifted after every explode level. So we have given an indent multi 2 multiplied by the number of explode level. So if it is first level explode then it will become 4. Uh, then it will become second level, then it will be, uh, sorry, first level it will be two, second level become four, four becomes six. So the number of explosion increases, the indent will increase on the left side. Yeah? So this is what explode helps us to do. A hierarchy report is again a very simple report. Basically, it allows you to move from one report to another report. Now, when we are into explode, what does explode do? It opens up or actually expands the required details in the same report. The hierarchy report allows us to move into another report to get details. Uh, we generally call it as a drill down report. Uh, based on the current selection from this report, the next report is displayed. A very simple example again to this is the trial balance. We go to current assets, we press enter, we get a group summary details of current assets. We go to sundry debtors and we press enter, 
we get the list of sundry debtors related groups and ledgers we click on uh, says sd overseas we get the ledgers in the sd overseas we click on not debtors we get ledgers related to not debtors we click on south debtors we get ledgers related to south debtors we click on mumbai debtors we get related to that we click on krishna so uh, this is what the drill down report is all about so the based on the selection of the current report the details in the next report will be displayed and it also allows the user to come back from the detailed view to the first report so it's like the first in last uh, first in last out uh, functionality it goes one two three four and out it goes four three two one so the way you go in is the same sequence you can come out now this particular specific functionality is with the help of the attribute volatile of a variable so this is what the variable volatile attribute helps us to do stack the variable value because at a given point of time we had discussed in the variable chapter the basic variable chapter that uh, a variable can hold one variable at value at a time so to stack, stack multiple, to make a stacking, stack values of variable, volatile attribute is used. And it goes with the method of first in, last out. Or you can say last in, first out, LIFO method. So basically to design a hierarchy report, you require the following. This is talking about the first report. In the first report, the field level we require an attribute called display this attribute uh, is nothing but the uh, action display to open a report and a variable attribute so this variable value this variable value will be passed to this next report a variable attribute of report definition child of attribute at collection because based on what we have selected in the current report next report collection has to contain the value so child of attribute at collection and attribute volatile of the variable definition so this is how it basically it will generate the first report the field name set as variable name display report name and the variable volatile yes now you must be wondering why we haven't provided the data type where this variable will automatically take the data type as type string because this is where it is being specified then the next report the variable will be called locally and the collection child of hash hash group val which will help my repeat line to get values of simple so this is how we have written this report here it is drill down report trial balance this is the main line the main field variable name displaying of the report the report recalling the repeat line variable name and the collection child of the variable name clear right now there's this very super fantastic feature that we talk about repeating part over a collection now until now we had been talking about repeating a line over a collection why would anybody require to repeat a part over a collection uh, generally when we talk about repeating a line on a collection this particular collection is of type a very peculiar type as an internal collection right an internal object and if you further want to read, you will have to go for a separate uh, explore and then you will have to call the values. So there will be an object context. Well, uh, where you do not want to follow this particular explosion method, 
you can also repeat a part in a part and this repeated part can further have lines and this line can further be repeated basically and uh, more of the uh, more of the scenarios it has been used in the multi account single printing where we will have more than one ledgers where you select all ledgers and uh, print in fresh page no so all the vouchers of all the ledgers should be printed together irrespective of whatever the page breaks are so within the current part of the ledger subsequent parts and lines of the voucher for the current ledger object can be printed so it's a very simple thing a repeat attribute to be used at part level to repeat over a sub part a repeat attribute at sub part level to repeat over a collection at line and a scroll attribute has to be used at both the parts to ensure that the text is not condensed otherwise the text will get shrinked and unreadable and then finally everything it tries to print everything into one page which is highly impossible to print so this is an example a part has part repeat my part on my collection scroll vertical the sub part with the line and repeat my line on my party line party ledgers so this will be my debtors and this will be the bills of that respective debtor this is how we will write the collection type ledger this is the main part collection the sub part repeated collection and this is type bills child of dollar name now this dollar name will nothing will be nothing but the request context of this particular collection and this is how this report will generate so you will have the main line the main part which has sub part and lines and then you can further have your pending details will make it your work easier for creating an aging report basically now coming to a columnar report now before we go ahead designing columnar report we need to understand how do we add these column reports or how do we remove this column report Now there are the uh, tally supports following columnar reports that is multi column report auto column report and automatic auto column report and then we have a columnar capability in edit mode also now when we talk about multi column report in a multi column report one column will be added at a time based on the user specified criteria for an example this is your trial balance alt c we provide here for from april to may so another one new column has been added as per the user details specified right uh, i say all c and we add one more so one column is added at one given point of time based on the user criteria in a multi column report a field is repeated in addition to a line so by default to scroll vertical we have to repeat a line at part level similar to scroll horizontal we have to repeat a field at line level so to create a multi column report we need to make use of an attribute called column report and an attribute of a repeat of a variable at report definition 
what does these two attribute basically do is adds three new buttons new column alter column and delete column so you see this new column alter column and delete column these button gets activated when these two attributes are used at report level then at line level destination attribute we need to give a repeat to the field and modifies attribute of the field definition at column report this modifies the variable specified with the repeat and it is used in the report section of the column report so basically what will happen here is report attribute column report and we write report column this is nothing but a name of a report and this report is what will get created here at every field we will have a variable to be modified and based on the modifications of the values that we provide here the column gets added so this particular attribute at your display report opens another report this report is what you will have to design and each field here will have a variable to be modified and based on what variables we have here for modification this report will have them at repeat So report attribute repeat variable here we will provide a name of a variable which we will be repeating our columns on which could be a current company from sv from date sv to date all these variables will be system variables now repeat a part definition we have already seen we can repeat a part in a part we can repeat a line in a part now and this is always connected to a collection the repeat attribute of part definition supports context based that is you connected to a collection and as well as context free repeat so whether you provide a collection name whether you don't provide a collection name depending upon your requirement so when there is a context we repeat within a part and a line enabled repetition on simple list variable values also so you can have a context free repeat at your part and line so the repetition will be on the simple or the list variable that we would be providing so it becomes a context free because variables are the elements that are context free so this is an example syntax repeat line name or parts name and the collection name is optional when you do not mention the collection name then you need to specify the set attribute with the count that is the number of lines that you will have in this particular line so that that the TDL knows okay how many lines it has to generate it cannot be something on the fly right something has to be specified so if you if the collection is specified it knows the count if the collection is does not is not specified it needs the count so uh, if collection is provided you don't need it you may specify it however if you do not specify the collection game then this attribute set is mandatory Now the repeat attribute at line definition also provides context based and context free repetitions of the fields horizontally. Part level lines are vertical, these are horizontal and the number of fields will get generated depending upon the number of method values for the objects of the collection. 
In this particular scenario of multi-column, we will keep it context-free for one simple reason. We do not know what collection we will require because it could be uh, the company name or it could be the currency name or it could be the period. We do not know the collection name. So it would be a context rate. When we know the context is when we can specify the context. When we do not know the context, it has to be context free and that will be happening. And the context will be through passing, passing through the variables. So again at line level, we can have repeat colon field colon the collection name. This is again optional, but the moment you provide the collection name, it becomes context based, which uh, we do not need for a multi column. In a multi column, it has to be context free. Now, so we'll just see how exactly we have done this. So the report we have repeat system variable names and we have column report. In this report itself we go to parts Part is repeated on the group and ledger. So it is a context based repeat. This is a repeat line. The repeat line has a field name to be repeated. Now please note here in this particular report, it is a field containing fields because we want both these fields to be repeated. However, we cannot provide two repeat fields together. So we provide one repeat field. Within this repeat field, we provide the two required fields, right? So the main is so basically this is would become the container field, and these are the actual fields which will flush the data, right? And now this particular repeat you see is context free. I do not have any collection name specified here correct so to perform this at reports level we have variables now these variable values has to get have to get modified so this will happen through the column report my multi column reports in this report whatever repeat fields we have sorry, repeat variables we have, we can modify those variables over here. So we'll have our line. This is the field say, modify variable name. And here also we have modify variable name and here also we have modify variable name. So the column report is short and sweet. Just three columns has been added. So I'll just show you the way we have created in our reports and printing multi column. You see this? All C. Click on this. We have company name that's how i specify here say we want to alter this so we say alter the same report would get open we'll say april 2000 to date and here also we'll say alter And now add a column right so we have the maximum possible values of these columns 
now I can give my dates also add a new column for this but instead of April just give me from April 2013 till date for comparison parameters yeah rest all the work is being done internally with these buttons as a tedious developer to create a multi-column report you need to remember the main display report should have repeat of the variable names these variables should be declared under the system variables we need a column report then we need a repeated line this repeated line should have a repeated field the column report should have the fields with the attribute modifiers of the variable names these variables are the same variables we have specified at our base report for repeat and the connectivity takes place clear simple well then let's jump for the next simple report auto column reports again this is a simple report now coming to auto column reports an auto column report is nothing but a set of columns that are repeated immediately again on the user integration but the number of columns will be dependent on the user selection so uh, how we just added one column at a time instead of that multiple columns will be added at one shot yet um, would be based on the num the column that gets uh, created would be based on the user selection so whatever user selects, say I want on all the companies that are currently loaded. So that's a company, that's a user selects that it's on the company. The number of columns on how many columns has to get created would be based on how many companies are open. So there will be a collection that we'll have which a user will select and that is what will get pushed to the parent report. So when the user selects the auto column button, multiple columns are added based on the specified criteria. So the base report will have the same thing. Report form, path, line, field. Path will have a repeat line and line will have a repeat field. Now that's the base criteria would be the same. Apart from that, the other attributes that you will have to use at the definitions would be the repeat attribute of report definition for variable name then we will require a repeat attribute at variable definition for a collection name a repeat attribute at line definition for field button we will require at form level which will have an action called auto columns this auto column button uh, uh, act uh, buttons uh, attribute will open another report that reports form will have an attribute called output attribute which will be flushing for a, va a variable that needs to get repeated on. So this is how it will look like. Action auto column report to in, uh, an action to invoke a report for accepting user in reports inputs. So this is how it will look like. At button level, we'll say action, colon, auto columns, colon, the report's name. This report is what we will have to create. Report form, path, line, field. The form will have an output attribute. This takes the field name. This field name will have a variable value variable name that will get flushed outside that needs to be you that near that has to be used for getting values repeated on so we'll just check 
uh, we'll just see how it works. So this is where we have an auto column. We select a company and these are the invisible fields of a label. Obviously, the user won't see these fields. These fields are for your, for, for your purpose. This is a variable name that will get that has to get flushed to the main screen for repeat. And this is the collection name on which this variable will get repeated on. Now, the moment I change half yearly, you see the variable names of the collection gets changed. Right? So, we'll just see this particular code. So repeat on variable names, standard, then we have a button, my auto button. Now the rest part of this display report is same, report from part line field. So we'll directly jump to this button report. Here the action has to be auto columns, which opens up an Report. Report has a form. Form. This is where, th without this, it's not going to work. So, at form level, we need an output of a field name. This field name should be carrying your variable name. Now, how does my uh, report know which variable to call? So, what we have done is we have created a TDL object. They hard coded object the hard coded table so uh, we i just show you first object the name the display will be company so when i select this my var name will be sv current company and the collection name will be list of primary companies now so what will happen with the help of this function dollar dollar table field name var name dollar var name the moment i select company here it takes pulls my var name so that's what gets flushed outside along with which we are also modifying the collection value dsp repeat collection but why specifically this variable because this is the variable we have used at variable repeat. So, one, we have a repeat at reports level for variable name. We have a repeat at variable for repeating on collection name. So, here we aren't passing the collection name directly. We are passing it through another variable. So, in this report that we have, we are modifying the collection name through this particular field. So this uh, collection name gets pushed here. This gets pushed to the variable name. The variable gets flushed out and the, uh, and the columns are repeated. So Alt N company see uh, so basically the other fields that we have uh, users we do not give that for user to view so we'll simply remove uh, make those fields invisible just to show you the back end working is why these fields were enabled so we'll just remove this Okay, we will refresh the code. So, what does user see? User only sees Alt N company and companies are repeated. Alt N half yearly and half yearly is repeated. Monthly and it's repeated monthly. Alt N you say quarterly, it's repeated quarterly. And say it's from April 2000 to date. And you say Alt N and you say yearly, it gets repeated on here. Whereas the method calculation is happening automatically, you do not have to write a specific code to 
do this. Uh, well, the automatic auto column is much more simpler than the previous two reports. Uh, very simple things we need to do it. So now what is an automatic auto column report is the moment the user enters the report the columns are available in the previous one we had to select the select the button and do it now we are simply uh, entering the report and the columns are available so you need not have to click a button for the column or auto auto column report the moment the user enters the report the columns are made so there are the components that you need to set you need a system variable do set auto column and dsp repeat collection at report level you need to set these variables Set attribute of report definition to specify the collection name for the variable, DSP repeat collection, and you will require a function, a dollar dollar set auto columns. This function will help you to refresh the variable values. So let me just give you a detailed explanation of this, and later on I'll show you the code. So the variable value do set auto column must be set yes at the report level so this is what we have done this is the report and set do set auto column yes then we have the variable dsp repeat collection to store the collection name so we have to say set colon dsp repeat collection colon the collection name and then we have to make use of the set auto column, which takes the name of a variable. This variable will be the variable name over which we are going to repeat the values of the DSP repeat collection. Basically, we need this function just to refresh values of the variable. So it will be a dummy optional form condition. So it would be just a dummy form and this will just help us to refresh the value of this variable and push to the forms. So let me just show you this code. And before that I'll show you the automatic auto column. Enter and the columns are available. We need not have to press any button. So this is what we have to do. Report level, repeat the variable name. Do set auto column, yes. Set DSP repeat collection. Now you must be wondering how is this variable connected. This variable name DSP repeat collection is the variable name specified as this variable at repeat. So basically the repeat attribute at variable accepts a name of a collection. You can hard code a collection or you can provide a variable name. Since we have provided a variable name, the DSP repeat collection uh, variable value has been set to list of primary companies. This is the name of a collection. Then at form level, we have an optional form. Set auto columns. SV current company. Please note it is just a dummy form to refresh the variable value. Now just apart from this, the rest of the entire code is same. Uh, we would be having a repeat line on a collection. This is a repeat line and this is a repeat field. Absolutely the same. This is context free context free uh, 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 context free repeat of the field that we had been discussing in the earlier part of the session.
Now we have something called as columnar capability in the edit mode. Until now, whatever report we see, uh, we have seen until now, we have everything in two lines and the breaks and things. Uh, now you can make uh, a horizontal scrolling edit report and it can be a simple grid format. The fields within the required line can be repeated over collections of objects. So it can be like an Excel sheet and you can also have sub collections and a primary object to be modified. So today uh, most of the screens that you see in Tally are uh, like uh, uh, more like a book format. However, there are certain customers very comfortable with the look and the feel of the Excel sheet. The current uh, interface can be changed and you can create columnar report in an edit mode to push the data. All right. So the same report, similar kind of reports can be created into the edit mode. And your auto column report is ready. Now coming to uh, the graph type report. Uh, well, the graph type report is uh, a very simple report. The basically, uh, whenever we talk about a graph report, a graph report will be a vertical report, which will have two vertical parts, a top part and a bottom part. And in the general scenarios is the bottom part where we show the graph is the graph. So this is how we are doing. At part definition, we have will have an attribute called graph type where we would set the graph type logical expression to value yes so and at field level uh, basically uh, it's a bar uh, in tally we support bar graph so we have the x-axis and the y-axis so to display the values on the x-axis of the graph and uh, we will have an attribute uh, that it's uh, for uh, the x-axis the attribute will be graph label the x-axis and we will have an attribute called graph value that will be on your y-axis and the value will be set to yes graph label yes and graph value yes on your field where the data is getting shown so graph label is for x-axis and graph value is for y-axis Right, so let me just show you a graphical report. Uh, before I go ahead, show you, you the graph report, let me just show you the uh, code for the columnar report, the edit mode of the columnar report, the columnar capability in edit mode. Uh, this particular capability, uh, you can see this code in sample TDL Watts new 4.7 columnar editing capabilities with object context. And we have one with not without context. So let me just show you the code first. So Watts new uh, release 4.7 columnar capabilities with object context so these are the details of the ledger parent address and address one three and uh, so we have address one address two address three so we'll just make a small change here ADDR line one. Okay, and we accept this. Yeah, the value is saved. Now, what has made this value changes? Uh, only the scrolling behavior has been changed. Uh, the earlier we couldn't scroll out of screen uh, when it was into edit mode. 
the scrolling never happened so today we are able to scroll out horizontally also when we want when the report is in edit mode uh, initially when we had an edit report and uh, we gave columns we couldn't scroll out of screen so today we are able to scroll out of screen so that's the capability we have developed so the only thing we have today is you say alter ledger updation and we provide the values repeat on my collection and the values are provided here apart from that there is nothing else that we have done this was with context now when we come up to uh, something like an uh, attendance sheet uh, the way thali has provided is uh, it is good for data entry operator but people uh, but for people who do not know the entries uh, so well for them we have uh, create uh, we have developed a capability without object context so left hand side the employee name is added number of absent in days say two days absent uh, overtime is zero and number of days present is 25 so similarly for other people we can create entries and present is uh, 15 say and for similarly you can keep passing an entry uh, specifically for an attendance entry say uh, you maintain it on daily basis and you need to punch in the in time and the out time this particular uh, behavior will help and we just save this now the code developed for this is again very simple create it create report form we have provided a list variable and on acceptance of list vary uh, on acceptance of the form we have called the function and this function is creating the entire browser and uh, what we have done is very simple we have made use of the list variable capability we have repeat lines how many lines has been uh, we have a repeat line uh, the line will be dependent uh, we do not want to provide any object context here because the moment you say repeat line on my employees it will connect the line object context to employees that is the cost center which we do not want because what will happen the moment you do something here and you connect it it starts pushing the data there we do not want to push the data there we just want to call the data for the reference so we do not have a repeat line on any object but we are setting the number of lines to the number of employees then we have the detail line which has a repeat field and it is for the num the kind of attendance type So, how you have created your attendance type is how the number of columns will get created. So, right now, uh, we only have absent, overtime and present. If you have more created, you, uh, automatically the column will get increased. And it will scroll off horizontally. A very important scenarios where you will have uh, stock items going out from multiple go-downs at one shot. For a particular uh, item you this might be very helpful specifically when it is from uh, going from your store or, so, or store or something like that right so i hope i have made you clear the columnar capability in edit mode is just that the scrolling horizontal scrolling behavior which we uh, couldn't do earlier has been made available for people to use a lot of uh, data entry op operation works can be done attendance maintenance of attendance is one of the uh, one of the utility of it depending upon customers utility you can add more to it the graph report as i said was very, is very simple so basically a uh, graph report you will have bar graphs and only by mentioning a report with a graph type and the values, it will get enabled.
So uh, we'll also see now one example of the graph type. Right? Uh, we do not have any uh, separate code created for this. You can refer to a code that we have made available for remote compliant TDLs monthly sales register. You see there's a at bottom there is a graph available made available. Right? So you can just refer to this particular graph. Okay, and the sales register, you see this, right? So let me just show you this part of the code. Uh, this particular code is available under uh, release 4.0 uh, sample TDLs, uh, remote compliant TDLs, monthly sales register. Uh, please note there are no additional codes developed. All the codes that uh, we are showing you during this session is available under help ref, help TDL samples. So in this particular report, we have two parts. One is the column title. This is the main part. This, this is the part in which we have the April, May, June, the month, the period and the balances specified. And we have another bottom part where actually the graph is getting showcased. So anyways, you know how to create a period collection report. So let me just jump to the graph where you have to see the graph. So here basically we're just using the existing report. Uh, and we have uh, the existing part month SR, which will have two lines and a collection is your period collection. Graph type is set to yes. Locally for the field where we have specified the month name, uh, we have uh, given the uh, short period name here and said graph label colon yes. So that's what is coming on your y axis. Sorry, x axis. And SR amount graph value, yes, is where your values on the y axis are getting appeared. Right? And basically, this is what it is. Okay. Simple. So, here we close the advanced reports. So we have covered different types of report, a tabular report, a hierarchy report, a columnar report. Columnar report, we have multi-column, auto-column, auto-auto-column, a special uh, behavior of a columnar report that it can be opened in an edit mode and a graph report. Uh, so uh, expecting that at least after this particular session, you would be able, able to develop all these kind of reports. Thank you so much.